New stock, plans and proposals, Sarabar. Stay tuned and all will be revealed. Well, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome back to Piccadilly Model Railways. Now, you might be thinking, what in the name of sanity is going on here? Well, it's there's been some developments on the double O gauge layout. Now, before I show you what's going on here, let's have a look at the layout, and I'll just remind you of what I plan to do. Welcome back. So this is my double O gauge layout, Piccadilly Sidings. Um, some of you might be more familiar with my N-Gage layout, which is based around Manchester Piccadilly and simply called Piccadilly. But I built this one probably, I think it must be getting off for nearly two years ago now, to be honest, when lockdown started and we we're all sort of hemmed up at home, not allowed to go out. And um, I just wanted something to do, so I felt I'd have a go at building another layout. And I always felt that Double O had more features, if you like. Uh, than N-Gage as much as as brilliant as N-Gage is and and it's starting to catch up but double O is always going to be that little bit further ahead if you know what I'm saying with different things that the locos can do in all sorts so I fancied having a go and delving delving into it if you like so let's start at one end and it's basically then for those people who have not seen the layout before but we've got a bit of a woodland area here. And the, the original idea of this was to have like a bit of a hidden fiddle yard, if you like. So a train could sort of go into this gap, be hidden by the trees and then come back. And it is actually a dead end. If I take you down there, you might even be able to see the block of foam just down there. Yeah. So that if I, if I did have a train sort of run away, it wouldn't crash as such. But uh, there we go. We've got a bit of a campsite here. And the two people on the bridge there are having a bit of a Barney. Oh dear. Something's happened in their life. But that's where they're staying. And um, the, the, the tent, which is that, has caught fire. And um, yeah, <laughs> let's move on, shall we? Anyway, we've got the bridge coming up here. Now, I haven't finished this area at all yet. That's why we've got these horrible gaps down the side here, because that actually lifts out. And the idea of that is to give me more space and access when I finally do put some water in here, which I've obviously still got to do. So once that's done, eventually that will be sealed in and these gaps will be um, filled up. There's no reason why other than that it needs to lift out. But anyway, that's the way it is. And then we've got the name of the layout here, obviously, which is Piccadilly Sidings, which is based around this. Now, the original idea for the layout was to create an ingle nook uh, shunting layout, a puzzle type thing, where I would create, um, have playing cards or whatever. And then you have to shuffle the train, shunt the train into a particular order. And I still will do that. The shunting layout is still there. I've just not used it for that yet. And, uh, but it will get done eventually at some point. <laughs> so let's move along. We've got, uh, um, this is um, an amber corn um, footbridge here. All this is obviously done via varying techniques. And uh, I, this was one of the first things I started 3D printing and those signs were 3D printed, that sort of thing. So it shows how long ago that was. And then we get up to the tunnels at that end which if I take you in and show you a bit more carefully, every single brick, believe it or not, and on the viaduct that you've just seen, was hand, was individually placed. And um, yeah, that was scratch build. So that took quite a while. Anyway, let's go behind. So there you go, behind the scenes now. And this is the fiddle yard. So it's a traverser, a six lane traverser. And that obviously just comes across. Oops, there's a loco caught up there. But that just lines up with the single track that comes out. And then I can run six tracks across it and then choose whichever train I want. But like I said, one of the things that I don't like about this layout is the fact I can't run trains continuously. I want to be able to set a train going and just watch it go around. And if I want to do anything on, on these inner lines, I can. 
and still have the other train passing by on the main, on the, I say main line, but obviously the one that goes through platform one there. So my proposal is that all this is coming out and then there will be a circle of track which then goes around the back and obviously it's just a radiator at the moment there's nothing to see but there would be a big long traverser which runs the full length of the layout running side by side like that and then at the other end it would come around and back in again and yeah, you can't work, it's not too difficult to work out where that's going to cut, is it? So obviously there will be a hole cut in here. Or the other thing I was thinking of is remove this and curve that round slightly and then have a tunnel entrance, which will then give me more area for scenics, which I thought might be quite nice. So we'll think about that. So that's my proposals. So I said new stuff. So let's have a look at it. So hopefully... This now starts to make a little bit of sense. You think, well, why are you showing us an oval of track? Because this is some of the track that I've bought recently. And this is the track that will form the curves going around at either end of the layout I've just showed you. So it isn't new. And I think in a world where we find ourselves now, where prices are literally just skyrocketing in almost every area of life, I've got to try and save some money somewhere. So this was one of the reasons I bought that. And not only that, why not? You know, it's good track. It do, it works, as you can clearly see. I've been running the Terriers on it this morning and it's had no issues um, transferring power whatsoever. Yeah, there does need to be a bit of cleanup. There's a little bit of paper stuck to the track over there and there's some few stickers on the bottom of it. But so what? It's fine. Most of it's going to be off scene anyway, so it's... You know, I can't really see what the problem would be on that. So that's one of the things. Now, you might also notice I've got six coaches on this train now. And when I showed you um, the Hush Hush at Christmas, um, um, which I bought then, um, I also showed you four teak coaches. Now, these are the railroads, but you'll also realise that there are six coaches there now. So I've obviously bought another one teak. And you think, well, what's that red one? Let me take a look. All right, there we go. So this, I found this on eBay and I think I got it for about 12 quid. It's a kit that somebody has made up. And the thing that drew me to it was the fact that it had got flush glazing. And I'll show you more about it in a second. But you think, well, John, why didn't you buy a teak buffet car? It would have made a lot more sense. Well, one, they're very few and far between. And if you do find one, they're going for extortionate amounts of money. Um, I saw one for 60 odd pounds, which you might think in double O gauge land is normal. But I'm sorry, I'm not going to be paying such amounts it's because, you know, as I said before, I've got other things that I need to be putting my money to. So spending 60 pounds on one coach isn't out of the question. I narrowly missed out on an eBay bid. Um on a coach which went for 31 on one of those buffets. Um, so I thought, well, let's see what else I can find. Now, like I said, I think I think this was 12. I think that's what I paid for it. And as I said, it's a kit. Now, it's not perfect by any means, but I think when the train's going round and round, I think that'll be absolutely beautiful. Now, some of the transfers are a bit poorly put on. You can see the outside carriage, the outside transfer paper, but so what? I'm really not that bothered. But look at that. I mean, how many um, full fat double O gauge coaches do you see where you get where you get work like that done inside? You can see every single plate, and I think then salt and pepper pots whatever they might be you know i think that's absolutely beautiful even down to the fact there's a toilet in there look at that it's it's just unbelievable the amount of detail that's on that and yes it does have some old-fashioned couplings on there but they're easily removed there's only a screw there so if i want to remove those and put something a bit more modern on i can or if I want to make my own 3D print some, I can. It's not the end of the world. I think it does need a little bit of a slight repaint. Somebody's painted this 
um, a gloss black, which I know it would be like that coming out the factory as it's been refurbished. But so I'll probably paint that more of a track colour, to be honest with you. So it's all been grimed up a little bit and uh, maybe put weather it slightly at the ends there as, you know, you get this like, suction effect, which sucks all the muck up at the ends of the coaches. So I might do a little bit of that and just dirty up these bogies a bit. But I think that's absolutely fine. And it's certainly... Um, in my eyes, matches something, you know, anything of a lot more expense that I could find. So I'm really, really pleased with that. Um, now, just to talk very briefly about these railroads. And like I said, I've got five of these now. So that whole train will be six if I can get this off the track, of course. Now, it's just a typical railroad coach. But what I plan to do with this is to obviously darken this down. And if you've seen a video by uh, Aidan's Railways, he showed a technique where using uh, a sepia toned wash, which he put several coats on. So I shall do that. I will paint the interiors as well. So it matches this coat I've just showed you. So all of that will be done. Eventually people will be put inside there, but it will take a little bit of time not going to rush through this but the other thing that I really really want to do is to flush glaze this now I'm not going to buy it I'm going to do it myself and the idea would be to make a 3d print a little frame that goes inside there so I'll use black filament and get it as thin as I possibly can which will sit slightly below the level of the the acetate so when I put it in the acetate will come up flush so that's what I propose and this side, it is a ki kind of asking you, but I think I've kind of made up my mind as well. So I'll see what you all say. But I've looked on the internet for pictures of the real thing. And the majority of them have got vents here. You know, the little slidey vents that all come along and you have a bit of a bar and there's, you know, two windows that open and shut. Now, I can't, I've seen a few of this type but the majority are the ones with the vent. Now, if I do something very similar, that's what I've just explained, put the frame around the outside, flush glaze it, and then put something over the top of that, 3D printed, of course, and then paint it up to match this, or the, the darkened version, I think that would look fine. Um, so that's possibly what I'm going to do. And again, weather them all up, certainly darken this down a little bit. They do look quite pristine don't they and quite toy like and plasticky so there's a lot of work to do with those but I do want them to look the part so that's one of the things that I'm going to do so so far then that's the track the the coaches um, there are two more coaches I want to show you um, when I got the 47 at Christmas um, from a very dear friend of mine um some of the people were suggesting some Mark IIs. Now, I'd already got this in mind. Now, I've only got one at the moment, and that's that one. And that's an Airfix one. And I tell you what, for the... I can't believe, for the age of these, you know, how detailed they are, actually. You know, and I think that is absolutely fine. You know, I think I got this one for 13, 14, I think it was, in the end. But that, I am so satisfied with that. That is just absolutely perfect. So it's just trying to track down a few more for the right price. There seems to be more first class around at the moment than there are standard blue. But if it's a case of buying a load of first class and transferring that into a blue line, I can. But they're only going to run as a as a trans, as a tourist type coach. Are they specials? Um, I can't remember what you call them now, but... But that is absolutely perfect. And again, it's got the new the new style couplings on there. So that is just beautiful. Now, I do have the same issue with the buffet cars as I did with this train. Trying to find something of a reasonable cost. I can't find any in blue livery. That is of a decent standard. Um, a lot of them have got the really old fashioned where you've got a huge gap um, recess in the windows. And to be reset and to be three D printing windows where you've got vents inside, uh, no thanks. <laughs> I know I do engage, but I do have a limit of some description. Um, but anyway, let me show you this. 
um, a lot of these special trains run mishmash and you just find any coach shoved in there. So I've bought a GWR one. It was going it was going for £17 and I got it from Rocket Railways. So I'm really pleased with that. Now this, I can't remember the actual brand that it's under, but it's certainly it's got Backman written on the bottom. I don't know whether you can see that in there. You might not be able to, but Backman is written in there and, and Hong Kong. Uh, so, but... I mean, yes, the windows are re are certainly recessed slightly, but to be honest with you, it's not beyond ridiculous. And I think that would just look absolutely beautiful. So I'm really pleased with that one too. And these corridor connections are made of rubber, which I've, you know, I didn't know they existed. So whether that would give, um, if a train touched it, I'm not so sure, but, you know, I'm really pleased with that. And um, for the money... Beautiful, absolutely fantastic. So, you know, that's that. But there is a big development. Let's take a look. I've got some board. And some of you might remember at Christmas, I decided to cut up my old settee uh, because it was had it, basically, and I bought a new one. Now, I'm not showing you that. That's totally relevant. But I went out this morning and I was looking at uh, the cost of some 12 mil ply board. And I thought, I might as well go for it. Um, so I've got four pieces and you can see there is a piece here which I think is 240 millimetres wide. This one is 430 millimetres wide. Now these are for the traverse section. This is going to be the base, this bottom, this narrow piece. And you might think, well, that's not very wide. It needs to be the same width as that. But what I'm planning to do is to put some 2 by one on the side of that in long lengths going across it. That could be screwed in from the back. And then any draw runners can then be fitted to the two by one. And then the, the top board will have all the tracks on it. And then that can then slide back and forth as such like the other one does. But this this board, I think, if I'm remembering correctly, will fit 10 tracks on it. And look at the length of it. That's two. That's 2.4 metres. So I can have all my trains out. Um, and stack them up one behind the other and if I buy an, if I decide to buy a new train um, which I might um, you never know things might um, something might come along and those two boards in the middle the one by the golfing man um, they are for the outside edges they will take the curve of the track i.e. those bits and I might need to cut them down ever so slightly. Um, they are a little bit on the long side, but it's not difficult. I've got the equipment to do that. So, yeah. Now, so I've got all the wood. I've got some of the track. I'd obviously need to buy quite a bit more track, but we're definitely making progress. So there we go. Now, there is one more thing I'd like to show you, and I will show it you now, although I can't do a massive amount with it. So what could it be then? I've been looking for one of these for a very long time and I got it probably, I don't know, maybe six weeks ago, eight weeks ago. Saw it in the model shop and it said it's second hand, but it's brand new. It's never been run. Look at that. Now, I know it's not the most recent release, but I've always wanted a blue 08. And when I finally do get up to doing that shunting puzzle section of the layout, then I think this will be one of the locos that would be absolutely beautiful for this. Yeah. Now, this isn't a review as such, but I'm just so impressed with that. It's just absolutely beautiful. I mean, the amount of detail on there. I mean, people are saying that the Backman one's better. I don't know. I've never seen the Backman one. I could probably believe it is. But I'm so impressed with this. So, so impressed. Now, the only problem I have with it at the moment, and it's not a massive problem, is the fact that a lot of my um, double O gauge layout locos are sound fitted. And I wanted to buy a TTS chip for this but you can't find them for love and money. So this one is DC only at the moment. So unfortunately, it will have to stay in its box until I get one or be able to buy a Zemo, you know. So I've got it connected up to the analog layout or the analog controller at the moment. So let's just have a look and see how it goes. 
just double checking that it is on the analog because <laughs> I don't want to fry the motor but uh, but yeah there we go and just so you can see I'm running the gauge master um, combi but look at that didn't murmur didn't it just goes I am so so pleased with it you up a bit obviously it will go faster but i think 08 only used to go about 15 miles an hour so that that is quite extreme for an 08 really but let's see if we can get it to go really slowly so i'll bring that down 30 percent Right, it stopped there, so just take it above it. There you go, look at that. Look how smooth that is. That's just absolutely gorgeous. And it, oh, has it cut out? No, it's still going. No, it's cut out now. But that is just beautiful. Oh, it has stalled. <laughs> I say all that and then it, it stops, doesn't it? But. You know, I'm so impressed with that. And I think that will make an absolutely gorgeous addition to the layout when I finally do manage to get it onto DCC. Well, I'll just give you some running shots now here on the oval. Uh, but the reason for that is so that trains can be running continuously. All right, catch you later. Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed that little running session there and hearing about all the new proposals that I've got for the layout itself and the coaching stock, etc. And also the new buys as well. There's been quite a bit over the last uh, few weeks, but uh, I'm hoping to start um, building probably in the Easter holidays. We'll, we'll just have to wait and see how things go. But you never know, I might start making the odd frame here and there. All right, we'll see. We'll see what happens. But anyway, I'm going to leave the video there. So just take care of yourself and I'll catch you again very, very soon here on Piccadilly Model Railways. Bye for now.